Hello. Today we're gonna learn how to make these super awesome collage designs in Kittle. Now, a few key things to keep in mind for these designs. We want to use elements that complement each other specifically color-wise. It's also just as helpful to have a palette in mind for these designs as it is for any other style. Also, we want to make sure that we are using high quality assets. It becomes really easy to tell once all of these items are right next to each other, which one doesn't feel right and needs to be swapped out with something else because it isn't as high quality. Okay, with that out of the way, let's make a couple of designs together collage designs yeah let's get into it so the first thing I want to do for this is choose some sort of background color I guess since I'm not doing a full background although you could but for this design I'm not so I'm gonna go with some sort of like yellow super vibrant I want this whole design to be super vibrant so I'm gonna keep that in mind while using my colors keep keep things vibrant like I said you don't want to use uh, if I'm going for super vibrant, super colorful, I don't want to use some elements that are vibrant and then some that are just like super dull because they'll stick out like a sore thumb and that's just not what you want. First thing I need is a subject. So I'm going to go and I'm going to search for a subject like this guy looks super cool. Looks like he could fit into this photo. And I'm going to remove the background from this guy. So it did remove part of his hand here, but that actually gave me... a an idea because he was wearing a watch so I'm actually going to put a big watch on him as part of this collage sometimes things that seem like a mistake actually give you ideas to do cooler stuff that you didn't think about which is nice so I'm going to size this guy up somewhere around like there looks good and I want to brighten the colors up on this a little bit up the contrast just to make it feel like it fits in a little more so it was a little vintagey looking a little desaturated and everything else that we're doing is really really colorful so we don't want it to be like something colorful and then something desaturated we play with the hue a little bit something like that is starting to look really really nice so i'm going to type it in watch and we're just going to look for something that looks like it could be cut out easily let's see how it does with this might have a little trouble with this blurred part. That's all right. We would just find that. Oh, I actually did a really, really good job. Well, there you go. So another way to test if something is going to fit in, like I, I know I want to put this like here on him, but if I want to know that it'll, you know, fit in in the whole design, I can also just put it on my background and say, well, hey, that has like a lot of contrast to the background as well. If it's just there and not even on him and it looks great so i'll put that right here so he's like wearing that watch one surefire easy element that i've always done with these kind of collage designs is using some sort of just circle shape that you can put behind your subject and i guess the only real challenge is going to be finding a color that looks nice with this i don't love red or paint blue is an option i mean like a lighter blue something like that is kind of cool we color pick his beanie. It's red. It's still a little too aggressive. I do like this orange. I might adjust my background color slightly. It could be ever so slightly more towards orange. Yeah, something like that is starting to look really good. And then this guy just looks slightly off center to me, so I want to move this over just in general. Another surefire element always is something floral. So I'm going to type in plants. Something like this is an easy cutout. We could also grab this one. That's an, another easy cutout. Here's a third easy cutout. Those will be really, really great additions to this. There's a background removed on that one. And that second one. And the third done as well. So I think I can place this one like here. But behind him. Just want to move this a couple layers back. Yeah, something like that looks good. And I also want these to be behind him as well. You can group those, find a place where this adds good dynamic. We just want it to, to add dynamic. So somewhere right here is, is pretty cool because we have this little gap here and we know that it's over top of both the background and this orange shape. And it looks like it's coming out from behind him versus here. It just looks kind of stagnant. But here, it gives a lot of good dynamic. I wonder if I just take all the saturation out of this guy this can also create a really really cool effect 
So I actually like this a lot because it allows the elements that I'm doing to stick out. Now, you don't have to do this on every one. I'll probably do another one where the subject is not black and white, of course. But for this one, I like the way that it's looking. Now I get to a point where I'm like, what other kind of elements can I use? Well, I've used plants and I've used this shape. I could probably use another shape and be down here. And so if if the name of the game here is is to add depth, we obviously want to have some elements that are in front of him. And sometimes it's really good to have that repetition of having an element bes behind him that is also in front of him at a different size. That's really, really helpful. And it also helps that it's the same color and has that kind of consistency of this motion right here. So it really, really makes him pop out and there's stuff behind him, stuff in front of him. Obviously we have the watch, but that was honestly just kind of covering up a mistake. Something like that looks really good. I wonder if we can even just take this and yeah, I mean, that looks even better because it looks like it's actually part of his person. Now I've got the watch that made me thinking about like clocks. And so if I go back to my photos panel and I type in clocks, something like this cutout would be super awesome. So let's try that. That did perfectly. And so I know I want to have this like jetting out behind him. And when you get to a certain point, you know, starting off, you just kind of throw things in certain places. But when you get to a certain point, it really is more about adding balance. So we're starting to have a lot more up here. And so we might need something down here to kind of balance the freight out. So I might make adjust the position of this. And I need to up the contrast on this as well. Yeah, that looks way better. And maybe move these plants over so that it lets that clock come out and breed it a little bit more. Now, it would be cool to have another clock somewhere down here, something that matches this kind of like orange, yellow, green, gold color palette. Something like this is perfect. I'm going to up the contrast on this one as well. And we can size this guy down and you kind of just have to experiment a little bit play around with it and see where stuff looks good i like it somewhere around right there you could also add like a grandfather clock would be cool something like this is super neat see how the background or whatever does with that pretty good job a little a little bit of don't know what's going on there at the bottom but this is going to be behind him anyway so it doesn't really matter could make this slightly brighter up the contrast just a little more and I know that I want this to be behind him and so we're going to put it just in front of that orange shape and so now you know so I had my leaf here but now that I have these two elements right here this is kind of conflicting so I can adjust this and move this around so that it creates depth between those two objects so this is starting to look pretty cool I want to add some sort of text element to this. And so since I've got this whole theme of time going on, I might do like some statement related to time. So I want to do something with text here and I could do a phrase like, that's a good font for that. And I could say like, don't waste your time. And I want to put this in some sort of arc or circle shape. And I'm going to close this letter spacing slightly and maybe size this text down. And so essentially you're just looking for a nice place for this to, to rest. This would be cool. So I had the idea of putting it on the outside of a circle. So if I just move this guy to right here and rotate this and size it to where it fits around that circle, sometimes you have to play with it a little bit to make it look like what you want. So something like that is super cool. Now we've got a lot of weight down in the bottom so I might take that same text and duplicate it and put it around my other circle up here. See, I would have done that originally, but I was like, well, you can't see it. But now that you have it here, you have it in two places, I can put it behind stuff and it, it won't matter. It's really more just of an element that fills space at this point. So I can just put this to the back, rotate this to where it doesn't look like it's conflicting with stuff. And I can look at my blue outline right here around my circle and kind of try to make this space the same parallel to this 
inner circle so that we know that it's lined up. So somewhere around there looks cool. And then I might change the color of this text to match our design in some way. So we can just try out a couple of different colors. So I like either that dark green or just this orange. Yeah, I like the orange because it kind of makes it look like it's connected to the circle in some way. So the only thing that I think that I need is one more finishing little touch up here. Maybe I can do one more plant shape. Something like this might work. Remove the background. So I can do some cool layering stuff with this. And yeah, so it's behind this circle, but in front of the text. So really we have a lot of layer and a lot of depth. Already looking pretty awesome. It is slightly flat. So what you can do is go through this and add just a just a little bit of a shadow. Turn the blur down. Maybe like make it slightly less intense. Let's try like 50% opacity. So somewhere like 30% opacity and 20% blur looks pretty good. So I'm going to go around to all of my picture elements, not the square, not the circles or the, the type, and add this shadow to all of those things. So after adding those shadows, I think we've got some nice depth here. And the only thing that I want to add to this is maybe a little bit of texture. So I'm going to go to my textures panel. My favorite texture so far has been if you go to the grain textures and you count over to the left. Let's see how many textures that is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This eighth one right here is pretty nice. And I'm actually going to put this on an alpha mask. Let's try about 15%. So that's giving us just a little bit of grain essentially on this. I also like these plastic textures as well. This is on the multiply blending mode at around, you know, between seven, 5 and 10%. So I'm going to go about 8% on this. If I want to go even further, I can just go into the photos panel and type in texture and add something from here as well. Something like this looks pretty good. So I can up the contrast and play with the blending modes on this. So I want just a little bit of that texture popping through. And then after that, I can I can mess around with having both textures on, one texture off, and see which one looks better. So I like both of them. This is just a little intense, so I'm going to back that off a little bit. And I think something like this is good for my first collage design. Now, for my second one, when I was going through the Photos panel and I typed in texture, I found a couple of these cool collage-looking full pictures so like that one was a cool one this one is a cool one but there was one specifically that i saw that i really liked see if i can find it i think this one is the one that i saw start with like something like this and then same thing we're going to look for a subject all three of mine are going to have people as the subject you could do like an animal like one of your animals or another person or an object so this is the subject for my second design here we're going to scale this up so one thing I'm going to do for this, just so you can get a little bit more of the outline of her, is I'm going to use this drop shadow right here, make this a fun color, and then up the blur. And something like that is looking really, really cool. If you wanted to, you could even turn the blur all the way off and change the angle of this. Something like that is nice. And now we just look for elements that look cool with this. So this is very artistic. We have a very kind of like graffiti-esque background and I'm going to up the contrast and the saturation on this a little bit maybe even blur it just so that we have her stand out some so this is very artistic and so I'm going to look for some artistic elements go to the photos panel so are these, there are these really cool paint strokes here I'm seeing a lot of this in the background right here so I'm going to pick this one I'm going to put that somewhere right here this one is really nice. You can make this one bigger. Maybe put it behind her. And one more. Let's just put this one right here and go behind as well on this one. Yeah, something like that is cool. Then let's look for some scribble element. I like this one a lot. Size this up. Could almost make it look kind of like a halo and make it like a bright yellow color. I'm gonna use this, size that down to make an X. Make those the same color as my halo up there. That's starting to look kind of cool. Maybe group these together and duplicate it. 
And since we're on the, the scribble train, let's just add another one. Maybe go something like this, make that the same yellow color, and then just put this all the way to the back. I'm gonna adjust this whole design slightly, make this a bit brighter, up the contrast to make that super vivid. And I wonder if I make this the same yeah, that looks really good if I make that drop shadow the same color as the halo and the scribble elements. And let's say I wanted to add some like text to this design. I could just hit T, find a nice font, close my letter spacing a bunch, close my line spacing, maybe even more than that. We can add this in places where it makes sense to put text, just weight wise. We don't wanna put text where it makes things feel uneven. So I think something like this looks good. I mean, if I group these and I center them, it's almost in the same position. So the weight of that feels really nice. I might bring this guy down a little closer. And I think that is good for our second design. I think I've got time for one more. So we're gonna do one more design together. So for this one, I'm doing a 1080 by 1350, which is actual the full four by five post size that you can do for Instagram. Now, when you do that, it's important to know that when it falls on your grid, it's still only going to show a middle 1080 by 1080 square, right? So we want our whole, the, the bulk of our design to be in the square and not have random text, or especially text, but not have random elements and text being cut off these two edges by when you look at it on the grid. So this is gonna be kind of our guide right here. So I'm just gonna add a border to this. And so we know that this, this, these are our boundaries right here. So I wanna do one on nice blue, blue color. Something that like that looks really cool. And I'm gonna look for a subject just like I did with the other two designs. So I picked this as my subject right here. I'm just gonna brighten this up just a touch to make it fit in more with this really, really vibrant blue color. So I'm just gonna center this up. As you can see, there's another shape right here. It didn't quite get this kind of thing on her backpack if I do this. So the only way, the way that I fixed it, which actually kind of worked out for the better, is I filled it in with this green. And so it makes this backpack look really, really cool. And so it looks like this, this lady is hiking. So we're gonna go for some, maybe some hiking outdoor kind of stuff. So I'm gonna go to my photos panel and I might type in like boulder. Hopefully we can get something that's isolated on its own. We can also use AI so I can say giant boulder on a white background. And then hopefully it'll generate something that we can remove the, the background from. Let's remove the background from this and see how it looks. Something like that is cool if we put her in front of it. Or maybe let's put this off to the side. I also like the idea of putting like some greenery or some lawn type something in a in a mask so we're going to take this and we're going to put that in this shape right here brighten that up the contrast and the saturation we're getting into a very very niche kind of style that looks a little weird as you're doing it but when it comes together it looks really really cool i do want to up the contrast on this rock a little bit i want to add some more foliage or some flowers Maybe something coming out from behind this rock would look cool. If I take this and I remove the background from it and I crop it so that it takes this arm out, I could size this up and then place that in front. Now I've got like a cool looking rock that's got some flowers come out out of it. I can put this behind this lawn and you really just experiment and see when something looks cool or looks stupid. Sometimes stuff looks dumb. I want to add another rock down here just so it's not one. We remove the background from that. So something like this looks like it could mesh well. If I put this behind, yeah, something like that looks good. Has some nice weight down there to the bottom. What about like hiking shoes or trail running shoes? So it cut these out like perfect. So this is also almost becoming kind of like a, I mean, literally it's just a collage of different hiking stuff. So that looks pretty cool, abstract. Maybe we can put these like right here. Maybe add some text. I think like a nice serif font would have a good vibe. Just need to close the 
the letter spacing quite a bit. Let's change this to white and make it a circle. And let's just say like, don't forget to take a hike. Put that something like right there, put her in front, and then maybe repeat that text somewhere. I could do like a custom kind of, just something wonky. Maybe up the, yeah, something like that looks really cool. And it's just weird, man. Like just be a little weird, be a little experimental. I could just copy this. I'm going to lock her. And then once you get to a certain point, just copy some elements and fill it out. See, obviously something like this is like super weird, but it definitely is a design style and would capture attention. And some people could look at this and be like, man, that just looks like a bunch of mess. It is, but it's a controlled mess. You're taking a bunch of just elements and figuring out how to make them all work together and to have balance and weight. It's really, really about balance and weight. This is a bunch of different kind of things. They're all different colors, but they're all nature focused. And, you know, even something as simple as using this serif font plays into this kind of nostalgic vibe. And then from there, it's really just taking all of these elements and, and putting them in places and saying, oh, I don't like that. And then put it somewhere different and being like, oh, I don't like that. And then putting it somewhere different and being like, I actually, I kind of do like that. That looks nice. The point is to do something that's original and creative, and I think that we've definitely achieved that with this design. One last one just for fun. I asked ChatGPT to give me a trendy graphic design project for another video, and it asked me to create an AI-generated scene, adding collage elements and cutouts to mix real and generated together. This is an awesome style and useful for many applications. I've seen this on album covers or posters. You can make some pretty awesome wallpapers, shirts, bags if you're doing print on demand. The options are kind of limitless, so get creative and try some of these yourself. If you haven't used Kittle yet, you can check the description for a discount code on a pro plan to get you started and maybe hang around and check out some of the other videos on our channel we've got some awesome style tutorials even some basic design principles and some more long format entertaining content as well give me all the watch time please well that's it for today thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one